Installing Nano Banana Pro Builder is super easy. All you need to do is download the installer file, double click on the icon. You'll probably get a Windows security warning. That is expected behavior. Just select more and install anyway. The app will install very quickly and then the main dashboard for the app is going to pop up on the screen. There are two main ways to use this app. One is just to create the prompts uh, using the builder itself and then to take those prompts out into Gemini app or over to a different app. Or the other way is to connect your very own API key to generate the images directly inside of Nano Banana Pro Builder. To connect an API, you're going to need to create an account over at Google AI Studio and then over in the API keys section, select create API key. You're going to name it and add it to a project and save. Then you're going to click here and select copy API key. I'm not showing you it because you do not share your API key publicly ever. Keep it private and secure. Right now we go back into our app. We select on the connect API key button. We paste our API key in here and save it. Now you're ready to generate images directly inside of the app. We're going to start off by typing in a description of the subject, action, and then environment tabs. So our subject is going to be um, a man in a white shirt, washing his hands and face, looking at a mirror. His handgun rests on the sink. And you can see there that it's put that into the constructed prompt. So then we're going to add the environment. And for this scene, we are going to have a grimy public restroom. You see, it's reflected that straight away in the constructed prompt on the right. We click here for shot type. And this is where we can choose from different camera angles. And these have all been tested and work really well. So we're going to click over the shoulder shot. You see there that has been added into the prompt. We even choose a lighting source and we click chiaroscuro lighting or actually any other one if we want. And we'll go hard lighting instead. If you want to deselect, you can just go in, click it again and it deselects it. You can then add in a bit of info about what that lighting does or the atmosphere. So it's dingy and depressing. You see, it's all reflected in the prompt up here. We then have other options. So camera gear, you know, Hicksfield only has three or four cameras. Well, look here, we've got so many more and they all have visual impact on the result that you get. For this one, we're going to choose the Lomo LCA. Uh, you've got the ability to choose film stocks even. So what type of film is in the camera? Lens focal length, lens type, so anamorphic or specific lens type. So we'll go anamorphic when making a film here. You then can choose a filter effect to add to it. And these can be stacked as well, so you can have multiple effects on top of one another. We'll go underexposed to make it feel really gritty. And then you can see that you've got your constructed prompt reflecting all of those changes and choices what you've made. So we are now ready to generate. And if we just click that, it's going to take a few seconds to go. And we've got our result very quickly. Let's take a look at this result. And you can see it has really followed the prompt really well. It's underexposed. We've got the anamorphic flare in the image, the gun on the counter, the grit and grime. This scene has went really, really well. Now next, we, what we can do is we can actually generate the rest of that scene. So if we click on this button, it's going to create four various angles. We've got this one where it's slightly overhead and you can see a bit more detail in the scene. And then a close up of the sink with the gun on there. We've got this angle where he's washing his hands and it's kept all of the details from that original image in there. We can click it again and it's going to create some more for us. But what I'm going to show you now is how you can take this prompt and use it in Gemini. So if you already have uh, an account in Gemini, you can use that without having to pay extra money. So just click the prompt. It will automatically copy it to clipboard. Go into Gemini, paste it in, click create image. And there you go. Look at that. We've got 
the exact result we wanted. Still following the prompt with the similar results. Now, if we go back here, what you can do is you can actually copy that variation prompt as well by clicking on copy JSON. We come in here and just underneath our image we created, we paste that prompt in. Best practice is to copy that image in and paste it into your prompt again, generate, and then what you'll see is four variations, each individual images. And actually we've got a little bit more variation in the angles on this one as well. So we've got that wide shot, we've got the close up, we've got this shot here where he's now looking in the mirror, and then a very close up of him looking. And we can save all those images. So it's really understood the prompt and still read. Although you'll notice when we do it in our app, we don't have a watermark. We also have the ability to do it in 4K and the rest of it. But if you are doing it from Gemini and want to get rid of that watermark, I would recommend you download Affinity by Canva. It's a free image editing software. Once you've loaded your image, go to the InPaint tool and then just paint over the logo and pop it's gone. Save that out as a JPEG and you've got your image without the watermark. That's a quick tip for you right there. You can take those images, you've now got several shots, put that into your favorite video generator, whether that's Kling or Runway or Google VO 3.1. And then you can create an amazing cinematic scene with consistency and style, just like this one. I want to quickly now show you just to give you a bit more of an idea of what choices you have. We're just going to create a subject here. We're going to create an image of a female detective with brown long hair, 1950s style look. That will do. Then we're going to go to the environment. This time we're going to create um, a sci-fi city. We're going to choose a medium shot. Now, like I said, we can choose light source, all that sort of stuff. But what I wanted to show you here, I'll just choose a camera body for a second. Let's choose the super 16 millimeter film camera because it gives it a retro aesthetic. What I wanted to really show you was these movie looks. And we're going to choose Blade Runner. And when we go up here, you can see that the prompt actually gives you a full prompt for how to get that visual aesthetic. So a visual aesthetic of the movie Blade Runner with subtle incidental neon lights, reflections, deep shadows, and 1980s film neo-noir look. So that's kind of created this prompt here for us. And with the camera body being chosen at super 16 millimeter, we should get a reasonably good result. So we'll just also change the aspect ratio to 21 by nine to make it very cinematic. And like here, we can choose the different resolution. Let's go with 1K and we'll generate that. While it's generating, I want you to have a quick look. We've got all of these different films, Jurassic Park, In the Mood for Love, John Wick. Uh, we've got Saving Private Ryan, Squid Game, Terminator 2, The Grand Budapest Hotel, The Revenant, The Ring, Shape of Water. There are so many different ones and all of these prompts will affect the output of your image in a way that makes it look authentic. For example, you framed Roger Rabbit, we click on that, and it's going to say here, um, who framed Roger Rabbit with bright 1940s noir palette, 2D Looney Tunes style cartoon elements mixed with live action. Now, this is our Blade Runner prompt, not the Looney Tunes one. And if you have a look, look at that. Very 1980s, very Blade Runner. It's got that look. It works really, really well. Now, if we generate the same prompt, but this time with the different style, and we get this. It's a bit more drawn, so you might want to redo that one. I'm going to give it another go. Sometimes you have to re-roll the dice. And there you go. That's a little bit more like the actual Who Framed Roger Rabbit. You've got the cartoon character, also a detective or with the woman. So these work really, really well. 
but it's not just film so we can actually I'll just turn off that one we also have photographer styles so here you've got different well-known photographers and if we choose one of these it will generate an image in that style so we're going to go with this one and we want to change it from 219 to something a bit more photographic so four by three generate that image this is the style of brandon Wolfel, so bokeh dreamy glow pastel colors light leaks and when it generates the image we should get something similar to that photographer's style i'm not sure how the setting will affect it uh, so it's not quite because you know it is saying sci-fi but you look at that the bokeh the neon looking lighting is in style so it is effectively brandon Wolfel. it's just probably not the best prompt but if we just said a uh, young woman in glasses and we put this to um, in front of a shop at night and then we generate the image i would say that that's definitely closer to that uh, photographer's style you can do the similar thing we've got all of these different ones there's actually over 99 there's 99 options available here you can search, but you can go through as well. Um, and if we wanted to, let's go with George Hurrell, who did a lot of Hollywood style images. We haven't changed anything else except for the photographer that we've chosen. And there you go. So that's got that 1940s style Hollywood look. If we want to, we can change other things with this setting. We can leave the settings as they are, change the angle. We can go in here, change the camera type that we wanted. But uh, just bear in mind that the sometimes the photography prompt will override some of the other prompts if it's a strong look. So obviously with this style of George Hurrell, it is going to force it to be black and white. So even if you choose different film types, you're going to get a black and white image. So just bear that in mind. But you can just easily flick between different styles and that's not even adding in things like lighting. So we can choose that here, for example. We could choose backlighting, which could be quite uh, effective. Maybe for this example, we could do um, top lighting. And we generate that image. Now you can see that there's a light coming down from above onto her. If we wanted something a bit more drastic for the purpose of a demo, let's go in backlighting, create that one. And there you've got the backlighting from there coming in. So very effective way to do this. But then we have a new question, which is, OK, well, I like this and I like the fact that I can change lighting, but I want the same character or I want the same background to be used every time. That's where this newest feature that I've added will come in super useful, and that is Elements tool. So we can now upload a character. And so let's choose our character. Let's go with my beautiful self. And we want the scene to be the same every time. So we're going to choose, we'll change our prompt, obviously, because I'm not a young woman. I'm not even a young man. But let's go with a man in a suit, stood outside a motel at night. And then we are going to leave all the other settings the same. We're going to generate that image. And there we've got me outside there with the backlighting and the same style and the location and the backlighting and the George Hurrell look. And then if I change the lighting, we're going to get at least the same scene and the same character. So let's do that. There you go. Look at that. How impressive. <laughs> it actually looks really good. Very, very dramatic, very film-like. So you can see how this tool is super easy to use and also incredibly detailed. Unlike Higgsfield, you've got a huge amount of control and options available to you. All right, so I'm going to give you one last example now. And what we could do is hit the clear all, and that resets everything on the page here. And then we're going to do one last example where I'm going to really show you the power of the elements tool. So let's start off. We're going to actually upload our images for this. I want to recreate a scene from Legally Blonde. So I'm going to bring in my character image. If we have a close up of the character, it always works best. The outfit is going to be this pink monstrosity. And she has to have a chihuahua, a very angry one. And of course, it needs to be in a courtroom. We're then going to just 
do our prompt. And I find that if we are more descriptive about the action, we get a better result from this. So a woman dressed in pink acting as an attorney defending her client. The environment is going to be a full, busy courtroom. And I think we will capture this with a super 16 millimeter camera body. And I think we will go for a 200 millimeter super telephoto. And we want to probably put in here shallow depth of field. This will mean that the people in the background are going to be super detailed because the more people you have in a scene, the more messed up the faces end up being. We're going to choose shot type and let's go for a upper body shot. Or actually, let's go for a three quarter body shot. And we're going to go for a higher resolution. We'll go with 2K for this initial generation. Let's see what result we get. And look at that result. That <laughs> looks fantastic, doesn't it? Really great. So she's there defending her client. We've got the angry chihuahua. The outfit looks perfect. And then we're going to generate our four random angles to go with this. If we have a look, we've got a high angle shot here, bird's eye view of the courtroom, a close up, but from the side. We've got another angle here where she's facing the judge. One here where she's passing papers to the judge. So we've not just got the same shot from different angles. We've got new actions happening in the scenes. And as you can see, the actual results have worked incredibly well. We can make more generations and turn this into a video. Your Honor, this is outrageous. Order in the court. I assure you, Your Honor, my client is unequivocally innocent of these baseless accusations. I have a witness of his innocence. Order, order. Case dismissed. Now, if you happen to just stumble upon this tutorial video for the Nano Banana Prompt Builder app that I created, and you're like, well, how do I get hold of it? Uh, there is a link to the actual app in the description. Over on Gumroad, it is available right now for just $14.99, but I'm gonna be honest with you, this took a lot of work. I actually think that the price is probably gonna go up by at least double at some point in the future because of all the work it's taken to get this going. Right now though, $14.99. Hopefully you'll enjoy it and really find it useful. And if you do, please do leave a review for me. It's already got three reviews at five stars. I want that to be hundreds of reviews at five stars. Please do get over there and have a look.